Welcome to the second animation of phylogenetics. This animation is an extension of the first animation of phylogenetics. It is recommended that you are familiar with the content of the first animation and that you review it before viewing the second one. In this animation, we will cover Darwin's big ideas, paraphyletic and polyphyletic groups, analogous and homologous characters, symplesiomorphies, and synapomorphies. This animation will end with a review and self-test section in which you will have the chance to test yourself on the content presented in this animation. Let's first start with the discussion of evolutionary relationships. Every organism has an evolutionary history which is reflected in its characters, also known as its characteristics. These characters can be structural or anatomical, functional or physiological, behavioral or molecular, which can include DNA, RNA, or protein sequences. Every organism has a combination of characters, some that were inherited from an ancestor and some that are new, for example, those that are acquired through adaptation. As you may know from your previous studies in biology, Charles Darwin had many big ideas that revolutionized the field of biology as we know it today. Two of his ideas have had applications to the study of phylogenetics. Darwin's first big idea was that evolutionary change happens through the principle of descent with modification. From this principle, we can expect that organisms that are closely related will share many characters, and organisms that are distantly related will share few characters. Let's elaborate on these two concepts a bit further. So, the prediction from Darwin's first big idea is that organisms that are closely related will share many characters. Why is this? Characters or traits that are similar among organisms often indicate that those organisms share close evolutionary relationships. Closely related organisms share a recent common ancestor, and because this ancestor has been recent, there has been little time for these organisms to accumulate changes that will make them dissimilar. So, closely related organisms will often share many characters. This idea can be extended a bit further, and it can be stated that characters can be shared between organisms by descent. This is where two organisms resemble each other because they are closely related. Another prediction from Darwin's first big idea is that organisms that are distantly related will share a few characters. Characters that differ among organisms indicate that those organisms do not share close evolutionary relationships. These organisms do not have a recent common ancestor, and so there has been lots of time for these organisms to accumulate changes that will make them dissimilar. It can be deduced from these two principles that the number of characters shared between organisms should reflect their degree of relatedness meaning that if organisms share many characters, it can be expected that they are related through a recent common ancestor. This makes sense, right? However, this may not always be true, because of Darwin's second big idea. Darwin's second big idea was that natural selection produces adaptation. What this means is that organisms that adapt to similar circumstances may exhibit similar characters even though they may not be closely related. Therefore, two unrelated organisms can resemble each other because they have been shaped in the same way by natural selection. Adaptations to similar circumstances can create similar organisms. And this idea is known as evolutionary convergence or convergent evolution. Let's discuss a real life example of convergent evolution and consider the following three organisms. 
a dolphin, which is a mammal, an ichthyosaur, which is a reptile, and a shark, which is a fish. When looking at all three of these organisms and considering their similarities, we realize that all of them are torpedo-shaped for rapid swimming, they all have large jaws and many grasping teeth for handling prey, and they all have large eyes and good vision because they are visual predators. So, we see that these organisms share many characters and resemble each other a great deal. However, they are only distantly related. This is an example of evolutionary convergence or convergent evolution. In other words, due to convergent evolution, unrelated organisms can resemble each other because they have been shaped in the same way by natural selection. So, the outcome of natural selection is that closely related organisms can actually be different and distantly related organisms can actually be similar. So, sometimes organisms that appear very similar may only be distantly related, or sometimes organisms that are actually closely related may appear to be very different. This can contradict the predictions that we made using Darwin's first big idea. So, from Darwin's big ideas, we know that the characters exhibited by any organism can either be traits that are acquired by descent, those that are unchanged from a common ancestor, or traits that are acquired due to convergence, which are traits that are new due to adaptation or natural selection. So, the main point here is that characters can be shared by common descent or by evolutionary convergence. To determine evolutionary relationships, such as what we do when we need to construct phylogenetic trees, we need to examine shared characters. We want all our taxonomic groups to be clades or monophyletic groups because only then will our phylogenetic trees represent true evolutionary history. Remember that a clade or monophyletic group is a group of organisms composed of an ancestor and all of its descendants. Only monophyletic groups or clades are true representations of the evolutionary relationships in a phylogeny. We need to determine whether characters are shared through common descent or through evolutionary convergence. However, this can be actually really hard to determine and thus mistakes can be made. There are actually two types of incorrect groupings or mistakes in phylogenetic analysis. The first type of incorrect grouping is paraphyletic groups, and the second type of incorrect grouping is polyphyletic groups. Let's discuss what each of these groupings are. A paraphyletic group, also known as a grade, contains some but not all of the descendants of a common ancestor. In this phylogenetic group, suppose we classify D, E, and F to be part of a group. Although we have correctly identified D, E, and F as being closely related, we have failed to include G in the same group, although it comes from the same common ancestor. This would create a paraphyletic group because G, although being a descendant of the same ancestor, was not included in the group. So you may ask, why was G not included? This could be due to many reasons. Perhaps G rapidly acquired many new characteristics, making it appear to be quite unrelated to D, E, and F. Remember Darwin's second big idea, because of which organisms that are closely related can appear to be really different, which is why G was not included. A paraphyletic group is not a monophyletic group because not all of the descendants of a common ancestor have been included in the group. Some descendants have been left out, in 